Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can retouch lips. And lips, in my personal opinion, happen to be the most interesting and also difficult part to retouch during the retouching process. And especially when you're looking at beauty images as well. Beauty images can be very up close and every potential unwanted element will really stand out, especially on lips. And there's also different stages to retouching lips as well. So I'm going to mainly focus on just generally retouching lips in a general portrait today but I might do another video where I talk about how to retouch makeup on lips as well so lipstick and things like that and kind of clean it up a little bit more but there are quite a few techniques involved in retouching lips and I'm gonna go through these today with you in Photoshop so I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial okay guys so one of the first things you have to consider when you're retouching lips is really how you need to approach it and this will really depend on what are the elements that you need to remove is there blemishes uh, is there a bit of dried or cracked lips are there hairs running across the lips? Is there makeup fallout? It really depends on how you're needing to approach retouching the lips. You also may have an instance where the lips, for example, might have lipstick on them and the lipstick needs to be perfected a little bit more or the lip liner needs to be perfected. So it's really gonna depend on what you need to approach when you're retouching uh, your image and, and how you need to retouch the lips. So in this instance, I'm going to zoom in a little bit further and we do have a couple of hairs that are kind of going over the lips. Uh, this is a beauty shot, for example. Uh, it's not 100% in focus here, so I do apologize. I don't have any really recent shots uh, macro-wise of lips that I can probably retouch on. But just to show you an example here of what we really need to approach here, it's a little bit of makeup fallout uh, that is going to have to be removed. There's some hairs that are kind of running across the lips. And there's just a little bit of unevenness, I guess, in the color tone across the lips as well. We're going to just um, make that look a little bit more even as well. I want to really just throw out there though from the beginning here when you're retouching lips I feel like the main tools that you're going to be using for any texture inconsistencies or any uh, blemishes or hairs that you need to remove you're going to be using the healing brush tool and the clone stamp tool. Those are my two favorite methods of removing elements especially from the skin tone and lips so we're going to start off with that today and to do this we're going to create a new blank layer and we're going to rename this to healing. So now I'm going to go and get my healing brush tool just on the side here, the second one down, and I'm going to make my brush size just a little bit smaller, just for these hairs first. We'll get them out of the way. And to use the healing brush tool, you need to either hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard. Click nearby where the element is that you want to remove, and then you can just simply run your brush over that area. So I like to keep sampling, so keep holding down Alt on the keyboard or Option just to get that variation when you're sampling. And I'm just gonna remove some of these hairs first off. So just keep sampling to remove them. This is one of my favorite tools to use because it is so non-destructive and we can work with it on a blank layer as well. It's one of my favorite parts about using it. So you can also use this tool to remove any little peach fuzz areas like just under the lips that you might want to remove as well. And that's kind of most of the hair is gone. I'm just going to move these ones as well, just because they're kind of annoying me to look at. Okay, and now I'm going to start removing the makeup fallout. So same thing, just sampling nearby and then running the brush over those areas. And any blemishes that may also be situated near the lips or on the lips, I'm just going to remove those as well. Okay, so now we've removed most of the blemishes and little spots on the lips here, but you can see that there is still a little bit of unevenness in certain sections of the lips. So to fix this, we're actually going to make some dodge and burn layers. So to make our dodge and burn layers, we're going to go down here to the adjustment layers, go up to curves, 
and then first of all bring this curves line right up so this is going to be our dodge layer like i said before on many of my videos i've done lots of videos on dodge and burn so if you're unsure of how to use dodge and burn techniques just uh, follow the link in the description box below i can link you to one of my most recent updated dodging and burning tutorials so now once we've moved this line up this is going to be our dodge layer and we're going to hold down Control and I to invert the layer mask. I'm gonna rename this as well to Dodge. And now we're going to recreate the same process, but this time when we go to a curves adjustment layer, we're gonna move the line down so it's nice and dark. Hold down Control I, and then rename this to Burn. So with our Dodge and Burn layers created, I'm going to now go to the Paintbrush tool I always like to make sure that my flow is at 1%, that it's a very soft brush that I have, and also making sure that brush settings uh, transfer is checked and pen pressure under opacity jitter is also checked. This is really helpful for if you're using a graphics tablet. Uh, if you don't have a graphics tablet, just make sure that your opacity is set to be a lot lower because that will tend to help with gradually building up the dodging and burning that you're applying. So making sure that dodge is selected first, we're going to start filling in certain sections that do look a little bit uh, patchy or a little bit uneven. I'm gonna make my brush size just a bit smaller here and we're gonna work on this area first. So you can see that there's kind of a bit of a highlight here that's been cut into. There's just a little bit of redness here. So we're just gonna fill this in by using the dodge tool. So you can see I've just kind of lightened up that little bit of a gap there. And I'm gonna continue doing that just over in this section as well. So I'm just gonna turn off the dodge layer and you can see what I've done there. So you can see that's just filled in that area a little bit more and it's just made it a little bit more even. So I'm gonna continue doing this just onto the other areas of the lips where there is that little bit of unevenness. Just across this section as well. And you can kind of fill in certain sections of the highlight as well too. Okay, so it's important not to go too overboard with the dodging and burning either because if you do tend to go a bit too overboard, it can look too smooth or too untextured and that's not naturally how lips are. I am gonna do just a little bit of a flick on and off here with the eye just so you can see what a difference that has made. And then it's really important to also use the burn layer in certain sections. So just here where it's a little bit lighter just to kind of bring it all back in together. I always say it's really important to use the dodging and burning tools kind of a little bit more equally just at times, just to make sure that you are still getting that contrast where you're retouching. You don't want it to just look too faded out. And you can make your brush size bigger if you wanna accentuate some of the shadows or some of the highlights as well. Okay, so just to do a quick before and after. So this is the before so far, and then this is the after. I'm gonna zoom out as well. So before and after. Now what I'm also going to do here is we're gonna zoom in. You can see there's quite a bit of color inconsistency now that we've done our dodging and burning and healing. So what we're going to do to fix this is a bit of spot color correction. So I'm gonna create another layer now, and it's going to be called color correction. And we're gonna set the blending mode of this layer to color. This is gonna make sure that any color we do apply on this layer is going to be applied in a more transparent fashion and based on the color that we choose. So I'm gonna get my brush tool and making sure the brush settings are the same. We want this to be quite gradual. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard and click on a color which is sort of the main color for, I guess, the lip gloss or the lips here. So I'm gonna pick something kind of neutral just in the middle here and then we're going to just slightly 
apply it to the corners of the mouth here, just where there's any little patchiness over where we have retouched. The thing is too, is this image was taken in some pretty uneven shadowed lighting. So it, it is throwing off a lot of colors onto the lips at the moment. So we wanna make sure that they do look pretty close to how they did in real life. So I'm just gonna zoom out now and you can see how much of a difference just applying that color has made. So I'm gonna turn that on and off on the side here. And you can see here just where it was starting to look a little bit too blue or too cool toned. We've sort of removed that and there's a little bit more evenness in the middle here. So you can apply this as much or as little as you like. I can press harder and you can see there that that's made a difference with there being less patchiness, but we don't want to go too far. We don't want to lose all the definition in the lips or all the different colored tones. We do want to just make sure that it's, it's fairly even and there's not really any little patchy section. And then as a finishing touch for retouching these lips, for example, I'm actually going to create a new layer and this one's going to be called Clone Stamp. So with this particular layer, as I said before, Clone Stamp is another tool that I really like to use when retouching lips. And I'm actually going to just soften some of the peach fuzz around the lips and just up the top here, any little textured uh, bits to make the line a little bit cleaner and you can really use this technique as well If you want to clean up sort of lipstick or any other lip color that's been applied You can also use the color correction uh, tool as well for that and that's usually a really good way to uh, Get a sharper line with lipstick for example, too So first I'm going to go to the clone stamp tool over here making sure that it's still a quite a soft brush and I'm gonna make sure the opacity is around 20% and the flow is also around 20%. I'm gonna make the brush size a little bit bigger. And for this, we're gonna make sure our brush settings are actually turned off. So the transfer option is off and pen pressure is off. Now to use the clone stamp tool, we're going to have to hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard again to sample a nearby area to replace this with. So I'm gonna sample around here and just kind of run the brush really gently over those areas. Keep sampling though, because you wanna make sure that you don't use too much of the one sample, otherwise it's going to repeat textures and we don't really want that. And you can kind of just soften the peach fuzz a little bit. And I don't really do much more than that, to be honest, these days. And then I'm just going to make the brush size a bit smaller and just soften this section as well. You just have to run the brush over a few times just to get that slightly cleaner edge. Okay, so the great thing about uh, this retouching process that we've just implemented here today is that we can go back at any point, change the opacity on any of the layers we've applied. Everything is as non-destructive as possible to the lips. And this is the really important part of the retouching process is always making sure that you've got a non-destructive retouching process. So I'm gonna do a full before and after now. So going up to the top here, we're gonna go to the before and then we're going to go to the after. So you can see how much of a difference that's made in the retouching process. I'm gonna zoom out and do a full before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. And honestly, in this circumstance, I probably would not wanna go much further. I do tend to have more of a natural approach to my retouching these days. If I had a little bit more time, I'd probably make it look even a little bit more uh, even or a little bit smoother, even with dodge and burn. But other than that, there's not much more I would do to this image. It is a natural light image. So any retouching that you do can be quite apparent. So I could probably even lower the dodging just a little bit to make it look even more natural again. But honestly, overall, this is how I would have an approach to retouching lips. And I hope you guys have really enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure that you do. I'll be posting many more Photoshop tutorials in future. Let me know what you want to see on my channel in the comment section down below. I'd really love to hear uh, any requests that you guys might have for Photoshop tutorials as well. But thank you guys again for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.